Hi there, I'm over in Basingstoke today on a primitive pottery course with Paul Smith. Okay, we're just uh, getting the kettle on, get a brew, we're going to introduce ourselves to each other. Um, obviously the idea is to give us an introduction into pottery, of course, it's in the title. Um, so I'm going to give you a few snippets of what we're going to do, uh, just to give you a flavour of the day. So that's uh, <laughs> the best one. Oh, I see it's, it's, you're either one way or the other, aren't you? I mainly like scrub them out uh, at the end of the day, or you go the other way and just don't ever wash it ever. We'll do a bit of an introduction, I'll tell you about me, you guys can tell you a bit about yourselves before we get into it. Um, this whole course is going to be a very, very laid back affair. This isn't a survival course, it's um, the sort of situation where we're going to need to be in a sort of hurry. So I like to have my sleeves rolled up, obviously it's a wee bit chilly today, so if that's um, an issue, just have them down, but just be careful that you're going to get clay on. Clay will wash out, um, but it does, it does leave a lot of mess. <laughs> So what we're going to be doing today is going through the sort of process of um, talking about what clay is, um, you know, where we might find it, what it is, and then how we can use it and the different techniques that we'll go through to make different styles of pots, you know, what those pots might have been used for. Just having a play with it at the moment. What are the things you notice about it? And a piece of um, sort of dirt like this, obviously Austin might have thought this was clay, not knowing, you know, what clay might be. In fact, Paul's called it dirt gives you a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we grab this. But, I mean, I made, the, I made the same mistake. I was searching for clay for years. And I used to just pick up my like, magic. Oh, yeah, I found it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was only when I found the real stuff I was like, oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, the easiest way to tell is obviously this breaks apart very easily. You can see it's full of fibres and stuff, obviously, because it's come from the field. Um, but you can see the sort of grain structure in there is very coarse. Mm. Whereas the grain structure on um, clay. It's very fine, you know, when you look at the surface, you can't make out individual kind of bits. And a good way of testing the, you know, the purity of clay, if you like, is to have a flat bit and run your finger over it. So one, it should be quite hard if it's clay. And two, when you run your finger over it, if you look in there, you can see how it's all kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys run your finger over your clay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you'll see you end up with a nice smooth line. Yeah. Mm. So you can see there, it's also yeah, quite yeah. coarse. Yeah, definitely. So, same process as before, just work it, get it nice and soft. Make sure it's um, not got any rubbish on it. Make it flat, look for it. So you can see I've got like, stuff in there, for instance. Yeah. So, the, the best way to get that, instead of trying to pick it out with like a nail or something, the best way is just to kind of like smear it out. Yeah, so you might lose a wee bit more clay, yeah. but you, you, know you, yeah, you know you'll be taking it out Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to switch that into a pound of shine. That's it, the pendants really are too, uh, <laughs> too much um, different from the, the beads, it's more in shape than that. I brought along a few fossils from this box here in my attic with a view to using them to mark the pottery. This is the clay that I bought, or I thought was clay. Um, not quite up to the mark, so I've been very childish with that, I do apologise. Now I've made the beads, I'm also going to be making a little pendant here. And I'm going to be using the fossils out of that box that uh, you saw earlier in the video. I was hoping to have an ammonite, but I haven't got any in there, so I'm going to be using these plant stems. I've just been having a little play in the, in the clay here with one of these uh, stems. Quite a nice pattern coming on the side, but actually it makes quite a nice star shape in there. So uh, I'll probably use that, I'm still working out the design, but maybe do the edges like this. And maybe just put a little star design and maybe some runes or something like that on. What's been done? So, we've had a good morning. We've made various beads um, and other little objects um, with a view to doing some pots this afternoon. So we're going to break for dinner now and I've got to try and get this orange tan staining off my hands and get this very nice flowing river just out the camp. It's sort of coming off. <laughs> I work in a camera with stained hands. Dinner is incoming.
Well, that's it. We're going to break for dinner in there, and then it's pots this afternoon. Well, that's uh, dinner done from chewing the fat, verbally, not physically. And now we're going to do an afternoon of coil pots and pinch pots. Need to check in for impurities on this bit as we start on our pinch pots. There's some. Using very little water is key. <laughs> you know, this is where I can turn it into a complete wash. <laughs> so proceed with caution. <laughs> okay, and then what you want to do is put your thumb in. So I'm left handed, so I'm going to kind of look 10 times more awkward. So put your thumb in, push it into about halfway. Now you'll see, because we're working with dry clay, a bunch of little cracks coming around. Now that's not a problem. <clears throat> because what we can do is actually force them back closed again. And then when we start working the clay by pinching with this finger, so what we're doing is we're working our way around, then we're going to start fitting out the walls. So you'll see you will start getting cracks. <laughs> but that's not an issue. So cracks like that, although they look really bad. Because we're working clay when it's still very kind of fresh, all of this is a case of pushing them back together. There you go, it's coming on. This is my pinch pot. I'm actually going to be making an oil lamp, hence the, the shape that's coming on here. It's perhaps a little bit deep, but it's my first attempt, but it'll do. Got some tallow at home as long as it doesn't blow up to fire it with. There we are. <clears throat> I'm pretty pleased with that actually and hopefully I'll still be tweaking a couple of little bits I'm sure but I might just put a little bit of patterning around the edge and I'm going to call it a day at that. No legs, no handles, no nothing because I've got a fairly good chance of that coming through without blowing up hopefully. So there's the final thing, we've been doing a coil uh, basket so I decided to just put one layer on and then I put my other coil on a lid which obviously just needs a little bit of smoothing out and working but it fits so I'm really pleased with that and hopefully I can get that handle looking a little bit more sort of ship shape um, and of course like all the other stuff I hope it survives the firing. What I've ended up with I will take the dog turd out of the picture oh, yeah, yeah. make it a little bit more classy. What's the dog turd made out of though because it's a different clay isn't it? Oh yeah this is the clay this is Chris speaking that there is made out of some that I bought to show um, Okay. Paul to see if it was any good and it's not so that's why I've ended up making a little novelty thing. So we've got some beads there, we've got a little arrowhead, um, a pendant with some runes on, a pot which has um, got a lid on it and I've also made myself um, a little oil container to make a lamp out of. Paul's lighting the fire using Amadou. I won't film all of this it could be a while. The sobrieties and flinters. Oh look at that! Wow, that's after seconds. That's brilliant. So you can see how it's smouldering there. We can do our best to eliminate those possibilities by you know, processing the clay the way we have, but you just you can never be 100% sure. So, let's see what happens So, what I'm going to do is just leave that now to sit and warm up. Again, you know, people will kind of make the assumption that you need to fire the pottery for a very, very long time, but actually, where the, the time element comes in is the heating up and the cooling down. All you need to do is get it glowing red I and mean, when it's glowing red you can cool it down and it should be perfect. But it's the cooling and the warming that take them on. It's almost like building one of those um, sort of house yeah. setups, you know, where you're, you're kind of piling on top. It's going to be like that. And look how black they've gone in just a few minutes. So because of the, um, I only made the now it's fully enclosed. And what we've been, what, pulled about half an hour now, is it? Yeah, it's a half an hour in. It's, it's gone nice and black, as I said before. And I can see now, after just half an hour, 
the pops have actually gone from a dark black colour to actually looking clear again. And there we go, they're considered done and slowly pulling the embers back and to let them cool down slowly and that's it, job done. So Paul's kindly given us one of the pendants he's just fired and Chris, Chris Lundgren who I'd mentioned in the video earlier is here to do a woodworking day tomorrow on the Sunday so he's also given us a little hazel whistle, which is rather kind of him. And so that's it, we've reached the end of the class, we've seen from beginning to end, simple stuff to intermediate stuff, seen it fired and of course we're now going to take it home and do that but it's been a fantastic day but just starting to get a little bit chilly now as we get to the end but uh, it's job done home with the uh, pottery that we've made and we'll see how we get on with it <laughs>